and we welcome you to the biggest party on the PBA Tour. Previously on PBA League, the Motown Muscle with Shona Kalazoe and Anthony Simonson silenced the top-seeded LAX. That was followed by the Brooklyn Styles and the Adam Splitters, and Jesper Svensson was just nasty. And A.J. Johnson had a message for Brooklyn. The message? You're out. Coming up, four more teams, 20 incredible bowlers, and all the noise here at Bayside. It's next. He looks good. This is amazing Bayside Bowl in downtown Portland, Maine for the quarterfinals of the Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup. This is the atmosphere that is unlike any other in professional bowling. We've already had one set of quarterfinals and we showed you the winners of those. Now today we've got coming up the New York City WTT King Kingpins and the defending champion down the strikers in our opening match to be followed by the Philadelphia Hitmen and the Portland Lumberjacks already through Motown and Silver Lake. And now it is time to meet the two-time defending champion Shipyard Dallas Strikers. Why do they call us the strikers? Boom! That's why. Looking for a three-piece. Who got it? Who got it? We're the team to beat. And we're ready to bring the cup home one more time. Nice cup champion. Leading off from Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Nine titles and one major, Bill O'Neill. In the number two position, this man won the 2017 U.S. Open from Orlando, Florida, Rhino Page. In the number three position, this man has three PBA regional titles from O'Fallon, Illinois, Kyle Sherman. In the number four position, 18 titles and a four-time PBA league champion from Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. the anchorman and player manager number three all-time in pba titles and seven majors from claremont florida norm Dude. and now let's meet the geico new york city wtt kingpin We are the Kingpins, and we are the first Elias Cup champions. Yeah! Yeah! The most exciting team in the PBA League. We have the fire and the desire to reclaim the Elias Cup. Yeah, that's right, that's right! Give it to me! Kingpins! Leading off from Mount Warrigal, New South Wales, Australia. Winner all over the globe, Sam Cooley. In the number two position, 37 titles, 10 majors, fourth all time from St. Anne, Missouri, PDW. three position one PBA title and five regional championships belong to the man from Elmhurst New York Anthony Pepe
In the number four position from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, the owner of two PBA regional titles, B.J. Moore. And the anchorman from Yakima, Washington, the owner of four PBA titles, Marshall Kent. is a Hall of Famer and a winner of 22 professional titles from Keller, Texas, CDB, Carolyn Doran Ballard. There's so much talent here, even the managers are great bowlers. Hello again, everybody, along with Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. I'm Dave Lamont, and we thank you for joining us. Well, not only do we have great bowlers and experience, we've got some showmen here, and I think right away of uh, Pete Weber and Norm Duke. Yeah, 75 titles and 17 majors between Norm Duke and Pete Weber. Remember, Pete Weber won the inaugural event. Norm Duke's won the last two. Two of the greatest the sport has ever known are going to go head-to-head. -head. And they know how to play to this crowd, a crowd that's going to be involved in this match all the way around. And it was one difference, though, and we just saw him in the background. Now with New York, this is a little bit of a different Dallas team here. B.J. Moore is not there anymore. Yeah, and we talked about it before, the, the unusual pick that Norm went with, with their last pick, and that was with Kyle Sherman. And I'll tell you what, you've never bowled in an atmosphere like this. You better find a way to control your nerves quickly. There is young Kyle. Now, we've seen other rookies do well. If you watched last week, A.J. Johnson shined. So did Matt O'Grady. So there is precedence for somebody to come here for the first time and do well. You can hear the crowd for Pete. They love Norm Duke, too. And they also love Kimberly Pressler. This is our, what, fifth year here now, and this crowd is just unbelievable. Every year, you know, you get on the approach, and if it's silent, you can't be, you got to, like, come on, make noise, make noise. So, you know, it's just a fun event, and it's going to be a great competition. All right, we wish you the best of luck, Pete. Thanks so much. Now, Norm, you That was Pete, Pete Weber right there. Do you know that was Pete? That was the Pete Weber, and this is the Norm Duke. So, Norm, let's talk a little bit about your team, because it's... it's change except for one person and you have this talent of finding young new up-and-comers and this year that is Kyle Sherman why were you drawn to him Sherman Tank I call him now well, I was drawn to him because he's he's a phenomenal athlete he's a great great bowler he's a learner but he already knows a lot so I, I'm looking so forward to watching him now mature and progress Kimberly it's gonna be awesome to watch just like BJ last year that's right and of course he's got you to teach him so we wish you all the best guys we're gonna send it back to you yeah that's uh, something there kimberly thank you very much norm do keeping an eye on the future of the sport well he has a fairly great one for himself as yeah. well so let's explain our format here if you've never watched team bowling this is the baker game format so you only get two frames if you're the bowler if you're the leadoff bowler you bowl six and so on down the line this is best of two you win both you're in you're on to the semis if you split them we have a one ball roll off and that's the captain's choice a year ago norm duke picked norm duke yeah. and what did he do he struck exactly so here's the top eight lax has already been eliminated the number one seed beaten by the eighth seed motown muscle and in the four five matchup it was the adam splitters who defeated the brooklyn styles so we have number two here new york city and number seven dallas those games were contested on the other side of the house. We've moved left, and we brought in the best fans in bowling. And we take a look at Bill O'Neill, good guy to lead your team. You know, I think we just ran a strike from last year, because that's pretty much what he did all during the tournament a year ago. Yeah, so good, so solid throughout the entire team event. And Bill O'Neill, just a great player to have lead off your team and get that momentum going in the right direction. Here is the Aussie, Sam Cooley. He was retained by manager Carolyn Doran Ballard. You get to keep three 
then you have to drop two, and then of course you draft two, and that draft is held live on extra frame in February. Probably a little better than he expected. The ball was left out of his hand and only leaving the four pin. Sam Cooley's got one of the most unique follow throughs on the PBA Tour. See the rings of oil on that bowling ball. The more it flares, the stronger the hook potential. And Cooley is clean there through one. Now we are bowling on lanes two and three on the left side of the house. The right side of the house was used for seating. This left side gives the fans a great view, so that's why we don't use lane one, so there's more room for folks to set up with there. And Rhino Page is looking at him right now as he takes the approach. Randy, what are we bowling on? It's the Mark Roth pattern, 42 feet in length. And I know we've said it before, multiple angles, but this truly lends itself to that as we saw last week with players playing out, players playing in, players all over the place. In the case of Rhino Page in the pocket. And there is the man himself, Mark Roth. The MVP award for this event is named after this Hall of Famer. Arguably revolutionized the game. Not used to seeing Pete Weber in this position. Number two right here, and no sunglasses either. for so many years. <laughs> well, Kyle Sherman's going to make his debut in this event, and he doesn't yeah. want to go in quietly. This young man's got a lot of talent. Wait till you see this shot. And this stroke. Big hand, a lot of revs, a lot of power for Kyle Sherman. That's how you start your career in the PBA League. That ball into the swing early, the big high back swing, open hand at release. And look at that ball roll. This young man is very impressive. The lefty, Anthony Pepe. Classic style. A little high there, a little bit of problem for Anthony. Another tug shot. Anthony was drafted in February. He had kind of gone from the game a little while as a contender, but yeah. has come back strong this year. At least a 2 7 baby split goes to a plastic square ball. No trouble at all. Now Tommy Jones, the most successful player really in the history of this event. Four titles. Yeah. So many times watching Tommy Jones in the clutch as the anchor bowler for those winning teams. And you got Bill O'Neill, Tommy Jones, and Norm Duke on the same team, and all three players have been so clutch throughout these events. He stood up on that one and he gets a Brooklyn break. With a trip on the six. Norm's okay with it. And so is the rest of his teammates. But probably not Weber. No. Left the target. Crosses over. Trip six. DJ right, Moore. Oh, is he awesome in this event a year ago? So awesome. awesome. Jinx, you owe me a drink. <laughs> Put it down. Double up. Come on. And now the captain, the only playing captain out there. The player manager, if you will. Won the MVP last year. My goodness, they're rolling hot early. 
Kind of had a feeling that Norm would be playing out a lot, a lot like what we saw Chris Barnes do last week. I think Chris even surprised himself with some of those strikes he threw last week. One time, Marshall. Speaking of young talent on this show, this guy. Hide the women and children. What else do you need? It's an early strike fest through five between the strikers and the kingpins. The Hall of Famers, Duke and Weber, and power from both sides. The rest of this first game is coming up. The Ocean View at Falmouth BBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by Ocean View at Falmouth, an active, maintenance-free lifestyle just minutes from Portland. This is retirement living. By Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. By Port Property Management, locally owned and operated since 1993. And by Shipyard Brewing, tradition, experience, and innovation in Maine since 1994. Please drink responsibly. So in May, someone will be holding that trophy happily. You see the names of the bowlers engraved on there, and Bill O'Neill will lead things off. Now, this is how Baker works. Bill is the leadoff bowler. This will be his final frame of this game. Unless there is a roll-off, and perhaps he could be called on by Norm Duke. And you see, so far, the strikers are perfect through five. Six for six. Making it look easy. Of course, yeah. that, that Brooklyn by Tommy Jones trip six, that doesn't hurt any. <laughs> Still an X on that board. That's what Mike Edwards, our statistician, wrote down. Here is Sam. Well, he, has, he wants a little noise, too. This is the one event where players are more than happy to hear a lot of noise as they approach the approach. Watch this follow through, folks. His first shot kind of went up the lane. He left the forepin. This time he gives this one more room. And that ball hydroplanes right in front of the head pin. It looked like it hit a, a patch of ice. And he comes in light, leaving the 8 10. Well, if he had only tripped the 8 out, there'd be some kind of chance to make it. But you heard already, get one. Yeah, ooh, yeah I don't blame him. Why not? Get a lucky bounce. It's all right. Come on, come on, come on. Start it back up. That's the voice of Carolyn Dorn Ballard. That had a chance. Almost hit the bowling ball and popped back out of the pit. Here's your reigning U.S. Open champion. No, sir, through the face. That ends the run of six straight. Well, I wasn't going to jinx him and say that, you know, a couple of years ago, they actually bowled 300. Was it not last year that LAX almost had one? In fact, Jason Belmonte thought he had that strike, and yeah. it didn't work out. <laughs> Either he's a big Ric Flair fan, or he was just impersonating whoever did that. I think I said this last year, if Pete Weber could build his own bowling center and invite the people he wants to invite, this would be Pete Weber's bowling center. Weber's perfect. A subdued reaction that time. Now they're, they're trailing pre pretty big right now. Uh, 40, on, 51 pins. But it's not total pins. It's River wins two games, moves on, and 
If you split, we have roll off. Could be more than one roll off. See the max scores. He is smooth. Wow. wow. Very smooth with a lot of power. No. See a lot, you know, his. You look at some of these one-handed right-handers who can just rip it. B.J. Moore is standing right there in frame as another one like that. And add Kyle Sherman to that list. Sherman, very smooth with a side order of dirty. Here's a also very smooth. I kind of wish we could all do things in life as easily as he makes it look cold. And a nice shot there by Anthony. Anthony's a gym rat. Works really, really hard on his game. Keeps himself in... Great shape. Personal trainer when he is not bowling. Distinguished career, Tommy Jones. 18 titles. Strike here on the lockup game one. And it's locked. So the strikers grab the first game. If they grab game two, they have advanced. No <laughs> messengers everywhere. <laughs> uh, God, if you could just rent revolutions. <laughs> Yeah, let's take a look at our Barbasol close shave of the day. I'd like to rent another 150 revs, please, so I can do that. Now yeah, Norm Duke, just to add on. Well, if you're ever going to get one of those, now is the time. Place. Yep, now is the time. You know what? Norm could do a trick shot right here, take them both out. So a two forty one strikers. The two-time defending champions have moved a little closer to keeping that defense alive with this game one victory in our quarterfinals. Game two is coming up next. Back inside Bayside Bowl, downtown Portland, Maine, the quarterfinals, the Ocean View and Falmouth PBA League. Game one goes to the Dallas Strikers, and they've done this before. In 2016, our Ebonite flashback takes us to the Elias Cup finals. Norm Duke got one. This is two, and a chance for a Baker 300 right here. Now that was in the semifinal match. They, much like when the Americans beat the Russians to win the, they didn't win the hockey Olympic gold medal, they only got to the championship match. But Dallas would finish it off. They have the talisman himself, Tommy Jones, and they go on to defeat the New York City WTT Kingpins 4-2 to two to win their first of two consecutive Elias Cups. And they have a 1-0 lead over New York after an impressive opening game. Never mind that open frame in the 10th. That one didn't matter, but Randy, that was a strike fest early on as the strikers ended up getting the front six to pull away. Now, you know, the Dallas strikers have great team chemistry, and I think it starts with player manager Norm Duke, not to mention the fact that he's pretty awesome at picking uh, some young, super young talent, talented guys. And then you got Tommy Jones and Bill O'Neill, the, the veterans that have been there and done that. So uh, they're looking unbeatable. They already won game one, and they did it in a pretty convincing fashion. All right, we have a change in the New York lineup, and for that, we go to Kimberly Pressler with CDB. We sure do, and we're going to get to that uh, change in one minute when I talk to Carolyn. But right now, let's talk to this guy right here who was actually handpicked by Norm two years ago. You guys were just talking about that. So what's it like going up against your former team? Uh, it's different. Uh, I, that'd probably be the best way to, to put it. But, you know, I'm just happy I'm able to be out here and at least competing against these guys. You know, with every single one of these teams has studs on it, and I'm just glad to be a part of this one. So. Does it make you want to win more? 
Yeah, absolutely. You always want to win. So, you know, it doesn't make me want to win less, but that's for sure. So it's, it'll be fun. All right. Thank you so much for your time, BJ. So, Carolyn, they, they mentioned that you do have a, a change in your lineup. And let's talk about that because they wrap this up in the ninth frame in the last match. So what's your answer to that? Well, we actually went with our lineup that we finished with last night. We finished pretty strong, moved up into second place. Um, chemistry, we're going to change it up a little bit. We played around with our second, third position between Anthony Pepe and PDW. So right now, as you can see, PDW's got his little thing going on. So we decided to put him right in front of BJ, and we're going for it. Well, good luck to you guys. Dave, Randy. Well, if you're going to depend on somebody, I'm looking at that guy to do it. Pete will now be in the number three position. When we return, can Dallas keep it going? Gorgeous day in Portland, Maine. But sometimes it's a good idea to play inside, even if the weather's nice. Take a look through downtown and time for a little Trek Tech Talk. Randy, you selected Tommy Jones. Why? Well, I think one of the things that's kept Tommy Jones at the top of the talent list is the fact that he uses his legs so well. I think that's one of the things that, that goes first as we get older uh, for, for players. But Tommy Jones, an ex-baseball player, great athlete, and I think he uses his legs as good as anybody out on the PBA Tour. And you get a view from the balcony here, which alone makes this such a unique facility and a unique place to bowl in addition to the great fans who come here and how the players just drink in this environment. So, Sam Cooley retains his leadoff position for CDB. They change lanes. They're on the left lane now. And we'll see what they picked up from watching the strikers do exactly that strike. Inspired by that chant, Cooley strikes, but he is unfortunately looking at a 10 pin. Good shot. Yep. Sam still looking for his first strike, but this one's a good shot. And just a vicious ringing 10. Which he will smother that 10 pin. So Dallas moving over to the right lane. Great shot. Great shot. Great shot. They did not change their lineup, and why would they? Right? So here go. Gets it started. Pretty good formula here. Their retainees, Norm Duke, Tommy Jones, and Bill O'Neill. That's a core for you right there. Ooh, an ambitious left turn for a strike. Billy play much farther right on the right lane. Watch this location. Up to about the foreboard. And unlike Sam Cooley, O'Neill snaps the 10 out. So now the lineup change is reflected here with the lefty Anthony Pepe up. And a beautiful shot from the Elmhurst, New York native. So we go lefty on lefty violence here. Lefty, lefty. Anthony Pepe, Rhino Page. Former number one pick right here of Norm Dukes. Dang, 10 directly into the pit. Do not collect $200. No mercy, no mercy. So Pete will now go to the number three spot. He struck on his two frames. Remember, in the Baker format, you get two frames, that's all. So we won't see Pete again until the eighth frame. I'm not going to get a break on that four. It was going to be really interesting to see how the Kingpins handled the different bar reaction on the left lane. This lane obviously hooks more. PD will probably make an adjustment off of that. Looked like a decent shot. He'll 
He'll move in. Come on, man. Come on. Maybe just the speed, leave his target the same, and increase his angle. Tyler Sherman debuted rather sharply for the Strikers in game one. Looking for his first big tour win. He's won three times in the regional circuit. From his initial reaction, I don't think he liked it. Well, from that camera angle, yeah, I was wondering. And next thing you know, the uh, the pins, well, they're gone. It's a 10-pin party in the pit. Once again, for Kyle Sherman, I think he thought that was going to break loose and go high. Yeah, there's a bit of a surprise react there. Portland, Maine. But sometimes it's a good idea to play inside, even if the weather's nice. Take a look through downtown and time for a little Trek Tech Talk. Randy, you selected Tommy Jones. Why? Well, I think one of the things that's kept Tommy Jones at the top of the talent list is the fact that he uses his legs so well. I think that's one of the things that, that goes first as we get older uh, for, for players. But Tommy Jones, an ex-baseball player, great athlete, and I think he uses his legs as good as anybody out on the PBA Tour. And you get a view from the balcony here, which alone makes this such a unique facility and a unique place to bowl, in addition to the great fans who come here. And how the players just drink in this environment. So, Sam Cooley retains his leadoff position for CDB. They change lanes. They're on the left lane now. And we'll see what they picked up from watching the strikers do exactly that strike. Inspired by that chant, Cooley strikes, but he is unfortunately looking at a 10 pin. Good shot. Yep. Sam's still looking for his first strike, but this one's a good shot. And just the vicious ringing 10. Which he will smother that 10 pin. So Dallas moving over to the right lane. Great shot. Great shot. Great shot. They did not change their lineup, and why would they? Right? So Pretty Leo good. gets it started. Pretty good formula here. Their retainees, Norm Duke, Tommy Jones, and Bill O'Neill. That's a core for you right there. Ooh, and a vicious left turn for a strike. Billy play much farther right on the right lane. Watch this location. Up to about the foreboard. And unlike Sam Cooley, O'Neill snaps the 10 out. So now the lineup change is reflected here with the lefty Anthony Pepe up. And a beautiful shot from the Elmhurst, New York native. So we go lefty on lefty violence here. Lefty, lefty. Anthony Pepe, Rhino Page. Former number one pick right here of Norm Dukes. Dang, 10 directly into the pit. Do not collect $200. No mercy, no mercy. So Pete will now go to the number three spot. He struck on his two frames. Remember, in the Baker format, you get two frames, that's all. So we won't see Pete again until the eighth frame. <laughs> Not going to get a break on that four. It was going to be real interesting to see how the kingpins handled the different bar reaction on the left lane. This lane obviously hooks more. Petey will probably make an adjustment off of that. Looked like a decent shot. Come on, let's go. 
He'll move in. Come on, Maybe just for speed, leave his target the same and increase his angle. Tyler Sherman debuted rather sharply for the Strikers in game one. Looking for his first big tour win. He's won three times in the regional circuit. Aside from the incredible amount of revolutions and speed these players have that I'm jealous of, I'm also jealous of their hair. They have really nice hair. Some of them do. Except now. for him. Yeah. But it works for him. It, it's a great look for TJ. For me, it probably wouldn't work. Well, Dallas is doing exactly what they did in the opening game. They just jump on you from the top rope and they don't let up. It's like playing a five-on-three pickup basketball game. Marshall Kent had left his ball on the, the wrong side. Now he's got it back. He wants a little noise, too. Similar to our first game in terms of scores. Yeah. In fact, it's exactly like our first game if Duke strikes on this ball. He does not. He has left with the baby split. Uh oh. Well, Norm's a great spare shooter, and I don't see him missing the 310. If he does, it'll be back-to-back -back open frames for the great Norm Duke. Deadly effort. That's not bad, guy. So the Kingpins are trying to hang in with the Dallas Strikers who hit the front four to get things started. They're clean through five, and the Strikers are looking to move on. They will if they win this game. This week, Extra Frame features live start-to-finish coverage of the PBA 50 event from Mooresville, North Carolina, plus the PWBA Sonoma County Open. Do not miss this doubleheader action in your yearly, monthly, or three-day subscription today by clicking on the Extra Frame link in the menu section of PBA.com. So we now recycle. We go back to the top of the order for the two sides. Sam Cooley, nine spare to lead things off. This will be his last frame. Identical hits. Ah, nice shot, Sam. Great shot. Carbon copy of frame one for Sam Cooley. Now he just has to shake it off and convert. Can't let this get out of hand. It was so big because they were working on a double. Clean your plate is the thing here when he's trying to make a spare. Yeah, he's very unhappy with that pin. Great shot. Great shot. Up. Holy Unfortunately, God. the pins are soulless. That was earlier this year. Two great friends able to put it together to win that event. Needs to push. Oh, boy. Oh, come on. Nope. Nope. That's going to stay up. And that is a big problem. And that's great news for the WTT Kingpins. Open frame and they lose count. If Bill doesn't convert to 4-6-10. Oh! 
That's about as close as you'll see it without it being made. Sick of the year, right there. Come on, come on. Right down the line. Had some action there for a second. <laughs> now, well, Kingpins are back in action. Should be an easy one for Pepe. Five regional titles and one PBA title. We saw Anthony at the Chameleon Championship for the World Series finishing the runner-up position. That was from Lynch Johnson won the title. Rhino Page had a, right, came out of the gate firing as a rookie and then hit a rough stretch with some physical ailments. He has come back. And the striking is slowing down a bit in this one. Yeah, and just when it looked like Dallas was going to run away with it. Last uh, three frames, two splits and then a six pin for Rhino Page. Next quarterfinal, by the way, will be the home team, Portland, against Philadelphia Hitmen. We get into these walls, and I think we take it for granted just how great these players are and how easy they make it look. Yeah, you do expect them to strike virtually every yeah. time. You're right. And they expect it, too. So you see the max. This is still... As Randy mentioned, anybody's game. And if we get the kingpins to win this one, then we will have a one-ball roll-off. And Weber puts 10 away. Well, they're hanging in there. And Pete's doing what he needs to do to help his team. An emphatic chopping of the lower extremities. I find myself doing that now. Is it because of Pete? Yes, I think so. That needs to curve. Oh my, bucket got broken up, but still three left behind there for Kyle. Yeah, now this is getting dangerous for Dallas. They keep waiting on the other team. And right now. The kingpins are positioned to be able to strike out in the ninth and tenth frame and lock up game two. And if that happens, we have the one ball roll off. And I don't doubt already that the managers are thinking through who should get that chance. We'll look out here. Oh boy, by a lot. Okay, that time. And the strikers have fallen behind. All right, guys, no mercy. Let's go get them down. Match score now 219. Kingpins are at 208. BJ Moore can take this into the high two teams in the strike here. This is a huge opportunity for the Kingpins to get a double here. And a strike for the X striker. Mr. Momentum's changed his address. It's all on the side of NYC. Do it. Let's see if Tommy Jones can throw up a roadblock. And Marshall Kent, the anchorman for the Kingpins, and of course Norm Duke for the Strikers. Good looking shot of another ringer. One spare, huh? One spare. This match is going to be all even. 
after Marshall Kent gets up in the 10th frame. Any mark? Marshall, and we're going to a roll off. So, I'll ask you now if you're Dallas, who do you call? Does Norm call his own number again? Like he did last year? Thinking. I can't hear you. I, I think I go with Bill O'Neill. All right, what about if you're Carolyn? Who do you go with? Marshall Kent. All right, let's see how that shakes out. Got his roll off coming when the bell gets rung. Marshall auditioning for the roll off. <laughs> yeah, that would be my pick right there. I think he's got the best line to the pocket. What's the line from John Lennon? I'd like to thank you all. I hope we pass the audition. <laughs> I think that's what Marshall is doing right here. And it's Superman. Your last name is Kent. Kent. Will you throw it like this? That's a little hot. It doesn't matter. He's trying to get out of the way. Way to go, guys. Come on. Way to go. So, Norm Duke, this is a chance for Norm to audition for Norm. Now, I'm going to. I'm going to say that if it was me, I'd take O'Neal, but I think Norm's going to pick Norm. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. One, because he's been there before. Uh, he's done this a million times. But two, he's also the last player finishing. Right. He, he, he hasn't had to stand around and wait. Now, if the roll-off is tied, go we'll right back into the barrel and pick a new player. professional adjustment that Norm made there to get those two strikes. He might look at... Nope, he's going to go adjust his tape. And why would you do that unless you're going to pick yourself? Because that's what Norm does. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen anyone fidget more with their with the tape and the cork in their thumb hole than Norm do. Be one shot, and if we're tied, we'll do one shot again until we get a move. Hi guys. I still like you. You just do shots. This is this lane's a little goofy for me. So it's you, it's one of you two. I would go you, him, me, him, him. But I, but I expect. Doran Ballard. Ladies and gentlemen, by PBA rule, this match must be decided by a one-ball sudden death roll-off. The higher-seeded team, the WTT Kingpins, will have choice of starting order. Each team will remain on their respective lanes for this entire roll-off. Each team will pick their first player. If the tie remains, they'll pick another player. We will continue that process until the tie is broken. Carolyn, who's bowling first? Marshall Kent for the WTT Kingpins. Norm, who's bowling first? Norm Duke for the Dallas Strikers. Good luck. Well, Randy called it. Going with a hot hand and Marshall Kent. And Norm Duke. Did this a year ago, and he cranked the strike. Oh. Ringing oh. ten pin. That was a vicious shot. A strike will win it for Dallas. A strike will put Dallas in the semifinals against either Philadelphia or Portland. It's too bad Norm's never been in this position before. Okay, I'm kidding. 
This is what this guy lives for. Well, didn't like something. And with all this ruckus going on, it's hard to believe that anything would distract him. I wonder if he's overthinking it. Strike for victory, a nine for another roll-off. Under nine, and it's New York that will move on. You can't ever knock him for the choice because he's done it again. Norm Duke with another clutch roll-off shot. And the Dallas Strikers' title defense, their hopes for a three-peat, continue. Let me just tell you this. If Norm Duke didn't think he could do this, he wouldn't have picked himself. Exactly. Kimberly is standing by with the winners. Kimberly. Wow, you guys should be down here. It is absolutely electric and Norm Duke. I'm having deja vu from last year because once again, you called your number and you did it. Oh, I tell you what, I don't call it. Uh, my team called it. And look, I don't like it. I'll just be right honest with you. I do this for a living and we're supposed to be able to strike when we need it, but there's a lot of weight right there and I'm shaking. I'm just... I'm just Almost hysteria right now. I see the Kimberly. emotion, and, and I, when I heard you guys talking over there, and you got picked, one of them said, I respect you. What does it mean to know that your team is behind you 100%? Well, they prove it, because I was the weakest link last night, and they're telling me, you're throwing it. That, uh, that, yeah, I'll never forget these guys for that. That's because you are the <laughs> Norm Duke. Congratulations Go on strikers. you guys moving forward. All right, Norm Duke has done it yet again, and so has his team. Perfect in the pocket when it had to be. We got another match coming up. Don't miss it. The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by MainQuarterly.com. The main thing is you. Original. Get inspired at MainQuarterly.com. By BowlingBall.com. It's where bowlers go with free shipping on every item every day. By Hyatt Place Old Port. Check in to Hyatt Place Old Port. Check out Portland, Maine. And by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe on the PBA Tour. So once again, the Dallas Strikers go to a roll-off. Once again, Norm Duke cranks it when he has to. And the Dallas Strikers have moved on, defeating the NYC WTT Kingpins in a one ball roll off so who are the strikers going to play next going to be either the philadelphia hitmen very balanced team or the home team is going to have this crowd on their side the portland lumberjacks it is time to meet the cisco philadelphia hitmen we are the hitmen always on target Messenger, down goes the tag. Clutch under pressure. It's our time. The hitmen, we're going to take the cup. Oh, it laid there. What? Get out of my face! Hitmen! In the leadoff position from Marion, Indiana, four-time PBA titleist, Ronnie Russell. In the number two spot, owner of two PBA titles of Avon, Ohio, Chris Loeschner. In the number three position, he is a six-time titleist and the holder of one major championship from Colchester, England, Dom. In the fourth spot for Philadelphia, the 2017 Harry Golden Rookie of the Year from Evansville, Indiana, Matt Sanders. 
This man is a three-time titleist. Two of those are major championships, including the players this year from Saginaw, Michigan, Tom Smallwood. And the manager is a Hall of Famer, both in the PBA and USBC. From Claremont, Florida, Jason Couch. And now let's meet the home team, the Port Property Portland Lumberjacks. Portland Lumberjacks. What do you got, Portland? Looking good for the Lumberjacks. Looking for redemption. Yeah. Leading off from Chicktawaga, New York, seven-time titleist and a major championship holder, Ryan Simonelli. Making his PBA League debut, one-time titleist from Bangkok, Thailand, Jojo Yanapa. Number three position from Friendswood, Texas. Two-time title is DJ Archer. And the number four position, two-time title is the Afro Fish from Taylorville, North Carolina, Kyle True. Position from Pflugerville, Texas, 10-time titleist, the reigning king of bowling, the big nasty, Wes Mollocks! And the manager back again, the USBC Hall of Famer, it to the former college football player Tim Mack to know how to stir up a crowd. A former Penn State defensive back certainly understands the emotion in this building. He's managed this side before in a crazy semifinal victory they had a year ago. Who can ever forget that one with Ryan Simonelli coming up with a winning shot. So for Portland you got another showman here in Kyle Troop. What about Jojo Yonifon? He is a bit of an unknown to us. Well that was Tim Mack's last pick and Timmy's got so much international experience Dave. He knows how good JoJo is, and when he came available, Timmy jumped all over it. It's going to be very interesting to see how he handles the kind of pressure that Portland, Maine distributes to all the players. Well, somebody who handles pressure as well as anybody on that tour is the anchor bowler for this Philadelphia squad and Tom Smallwood. What, what makes him so tough? That's a great question. You know, he's got three titles. Two of them are majors, but he's, he's known on tour as being the best, one of the best clutch players out here. It's, it's almost like he just doesn't care. He's not afraid of failure. And he's so good in the clutch. And we've seen it time and time again with Tom. And it's no, no surprise he's going to anchor for the hitman. So he's going to have to deal with a hostile crowd here. This is the home team going at it now. The Portland Lumberjacks runners up a year ago trying to get to the semifinals. Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by MainQuarterly.com. The main thing is you. Original. Get inspired at MainQuarterly.com. By BowlingBall.com. It's where bowlers go with free shipping on every item every day. By Hyatt Place Old Port. Check in to Hyatt Place Old Port. Check out Portland, Maine. And by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe on the PBA Tour.
So once again, the Dallas Strikers go to a roll-off. Once again, Norm Duke cranks it when he has to. And the Dallas Strikers have moved on, defeating the NYC WTT Kingpins in a one-ball roll-off. So who are the Strikers going to play next? Going to be either the Philadelphia Hitmen, very balanced team, or the home team is going to have this crowd on their side, the Portland Lumberjacks. It is time to meet the Cisco Philadelphia Hitmen. We are the Hitmen, always on target. Messenger down goes the tag. Clutch under pressure. It's our time. The Hitmen, we're going to take the cup. Oh, late there. Lock. Get out of my face! Hitman! In the leadoff position from Marion, Indiana, four-time PBA titleist, Ronnie Russell! In the number two spot, owner of two PBA titles of Avon, Ohio, Chris Loeschutter! In the number three position, he is a six-time titleist and holder of one major championship from Colchester, England, Dom Barrett. In the fourth spot for Philadelphia, the 2017 Harry Golden Rookie of the Year from Evansville, Indiana, Matt Sanders. This man is a three-time titleist. Two of those are major championships, including the players this year from Saginaw, Michigan, Tom Smallwood. And the manager is a Hall of Famer, both in the PBA and USBC. From Claremont, Florida, Jason Couch. And now let's meet the home team, the Port Property Portland Lumberjacks. Portland Lumberjacks. What do you got, Portland? <laughs> Looking good for the Lumberjacks. <laughs> Looking for redemption. Lumberjack! Leading off from Chicktawaga, New York, seven-time finalist of the major championship holder, Ryan Simonelli! Making his PBA League debut, one-time titleist from Bangkok, Thailand, Jojo Yanapa! Position from Friendswood, Texas. Two time title is DJ Archer. <laughs> and the number four position, two time title is the Afro Fish from Taylorville, North Carolina, Kyle True. Position from Pflugerville, Texas, 10-time titleist, the reigning king of bowling, the big nasty, Wes Mollat! And the manager back again, the USBC Hall of Famer, Leave it. 
tribute to the former college football player Tim Mack to know how to stir up a crowd. A former Penn State defensive back certainly understands the emotion in this building. He's managed this side before in a crazy semifinal victory they had a year ago. Who can ever forget that one with Ryan Simonelli coming up with a winning shot. So, for Portland, you got another showman here in Kyle Troop. What about JoJo Yonifon? He is a bit of an unknown to us. Well, that was Tim Mack's last pick, and Timmy's got so much international experience, Dave. He knows how good JoJo is. And when he came available, Timmy jumped all over it. It's going to be very interesting to see how he handles the kind of pressure that Portland, Maine distributes to all the players. Well, somebody who handles pressure as well as anybody on that tour is the anchor bowler for this Philadelphia squad and Tom Smallwood. What, what makes him so tough? That's a great question. I, you know, he's got three titles. Two of them are majors, but he's he's known on tour as being the best, one of the best clutch players out here. It's it's almost like he just doesn't care. He's not afraid of failure, and he's so good in the clutch. And we've seen it time and time again with Tom. And it's no no surprise he's going to anchor for the Hitman. So he's going to have to deal with a hostile crowd here. This is the home team going at it now. The Portland Lumberjacks runners up a year ago trying to get to the semifinals. From the front office staff to the medical technicians and the doctors. Playing on the same team. Discover Spectrum Healthcare Partners and the power of integrated specialty care. Ocean View at Belmouth near the rocky coast of southern Maine offers an environment where personal growth is an essential part of life. Stimulating programs create an active social setting where meeting new people is simple. And with our maintenance-free lifestyle and strong sense of community, it's easy to stay young at heart in this exciting new chapter of your retirement. Introducing 5-Hour Tea. With caffeine from green tea leaves and only green tea leaves. It's energy for people with a more natural outlook. Caffeine from green tea leaves. Release your natural side from the makers of 5-Hour Energy. This is what I feel like when I wear regular shoes. Cramped and uncomfortable. Mr. Long, you've been upgraded. Which is why I wear Skechers Wide Fit Shoes. It's like first class for your feet. Try Skechers Wide Fit with air-cooled memory foam. Andrew! Tom. Burn it! Okay. I'm gonna burn it! First pitch! Baseball's no-brainer. Hand signals. Barbasol's no-brainer, finally making razors. Enter for a chance to win an MLB All-Star Game experience. Your eyes want to deceive you. Fill in the blanks with the limited information you already possess. You don't know what you're looking at. Craftsmanship is about understanding. Truly knowing something, every facet, inside and out. To reveal simple truths that unlock everything welcome to detail we are in the pba league quarterfinals the last of the four quarterfinals about to happen right now here at bayside bowl in downtown portland maine the hitman in philadelphia versus the portland lumberjacks and so that is the chop now Kimberly Pressler is surrounded by expert trash talkers. Kimberly, good luck. Indeed they are. These two right here are two of the best trash talkers ever because I do remember every time I get to uh, interview you two, you guys have bowled together against each other twice now. Each of you have a win, but every time there's a whole lot of trash talking going on. So Jason, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're taking the win today. I will be taking the win today. I will conduct business like I normally do and take this boy down. Oh, I love the confidence here. But you know what? They have the home field advantage here. Is that throwing you guys off? I got a lot of veteran savvy on my team today. Not worried about these guys at all. All right. I love the confidence. Jason, thank you so much for your time. 
All right, Tim, let's talk about the fact that your team made it to the finals last year, but you did not walk away with the win, and I saw the heartbreak in your eyes. What would it mean for you to come back this year and take it all? I mean, it would mean everything. This is why we play the event. We want to win it for Portland. We want to win it for Charlie Mitchell. We want to win it for Bayside Bowl. And, uh, you know, it's a huge honor to win the Elias Cup, and hopefully this year we can always hoist the trophy. It sure is. We wish you guys the best of luck. All right, Tim and Jason, thank you very much. Kimberly, you as well. And uh, this one's going to be interesting because Philadelphia is just so balanced. And Ronnie Russell will lead things off. Ronnie was the winner of the Pro-Am, which is something to behold when they have that Pro-Am here. Yep, something to throw him on. I think it was a giant size cutout of Guppy Troop, I'm quite serious, that might have caught his eye. <laughs> oh, a reluctant but down eight. <laughs> Watch what this ball does to the eight and nine pin. How about that? Well, that's a perfect way to start for Ronnie. Now we go to the other side. And the Portland, this is an interesting decision, having this powerhouse open things. Oh, I thought that messenger might break that split up. Left-handers didn't fare all that great in our opening match. And that's probably why the decision was made to put Ryan at the number one spot instead of anchor. And to go for it right here and get a miss. Now again, if you're just sitting down, Baker format, this is five bowlers, each one gets two frames. Just a little quick. Wow. Okay. Just a little bit in that spot. That's the only reason why it went by. And you move on if you win two, or when you win two. And if we have a tie at 1-1, we'll have a roll-off as we did earlier today. Chris Loeschetter, a little through the base, 3 6 10 left behind. We didn't put Phyllis in the fight, so that may be a shout out. we need. They're going defense, meaning knockdown defense. Either that or somehow somebody broke out a basketball game and we weren't watching. Chris, the winner of the Sportsmanship Award earlier this year. Come on, some noise. It's not how it's how many. <laughs> As you mentioned, the winner of the Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award. I'll tell you what else, Jason Couch, Coming off a recent knee surgery, I talked to him last week, and he said, you know what, Brady says, my knee is better than it has been in five years. Jason Couch can come out here and bowl these boys right now. In his time, brother, we see something. Now, the man from Bangkok. And a sweep of the 10 pin. Hey, Timmy, how do you like your choice? I know it's early, but... <laughs> He's one for one. You mentioned it before, Tim Mack has had a significant career in Asia and understands that part of the world so well. Yep. Timmy's been everywhere. So is this guy from England, Dom Barrett. <laughs> That's back to back, three six tens. Way yeah. of converting it. Hit that with a pocket. Now here's DJ Archer, who was dancing DJ Archer a year ago in this event. <laughs> Broke out some mildly wicked dance moves. Oh, yeah. 
I see it. it. Wait, I want to see the dancing. Well, he's saving his moves for a little bit later on, perhaps. Now, Matt Sanders. Now, earlier we saw Anthony Pepe, a very stylistic left-hander. I think you can say the same thing about Matt. Yes, trip on that six. It looks like Matt's using your huh? But I agree with you, classic style. Just a, a, a real fun player to watch. Trips out that six pin late. He's a stylist. Runaway winner of the Rookie of the Year award for 2017. having himself quite a year as we take a look at the cutout of his father Guppy. We're in Portland, baby. We're in Portland. Let's go. Kyle Troop, who made a name for himself at this event, also when we had the Roth Holman doubles here a year ago. Now Smallwood. Wow, she deep. Wow. And now my favorite nickname in the sport, the Big Nasty, Wes Malak. Oh boy. Whoa, right, right. A bit of a surprise, Wes has always done well here. Well, you heard him say it's terrible now. I see that the location is wide right, but I'm not sure how it came out of his hand because it looked like it went right through the break point. Which would tell me he didn't release it properly. So we've gone through the lineup one time each, and it's close. The Hitman with just a two-pin advantage against the home squad, trying to get back to the finals. So there is our host on the left, Charlie Mitchell. And that is Guppy Troop. And that is Guppy Troop. Kyle's dead, a genuinely colorful character then and now. It is time for our Columbia 300 fun facts. I like this one a lot. A Dutch 200 refers to a game where strikes and spares are alternated to get a score of exactly 200. So there you go, Randy. <laughs> yeah, no fun. No doubles. What happened to that fourth? Wait a minute, why is my name on there? Well, that's what I was going to suggest. I don't, you know, I'm sure you've never done that. So the hitman off and double. They go back to Ronnie Russell. He struck in the first frame. This will be Ronnie's last frame of this game. And he is two for two with a powerhouse right-handed punch. Focused. <laughs> now Ryan Simonelli, who opened in his first frame. Yeah. Not this time. Yeah. We have come to expect from Ryan. Well, after his first shot, Tim Mack told him he was just a little firm. He had to get a little softer. That time that that ball comes around the corner, he does not leave the two seven. Excuse me, three seven. Hail. No, nope, not gonna happen for Chris. It didn't matter. The quitter ten for low shedder on the left lane.
Chris was with Philadelphia last year. He was exposed in the draft, but they grabbed him. A lead of 11 for the hitman. The Lumberjacks working a strike in the sixth. And JoJo looked really good on his first try. He sure did. Crowd chanting Jojo, Jojo. But it's much easier to say than Yanafan. Well, a double for him. Just a great shot. Look at this form as he, his footwork is going sideways to the foul line. That keeps his body open, hips open. And great execution there for Jojo Yonafan. Now we go to the eighth frame with the number three bowlers. Dom Barrett. Flush. Great opening match here. One pin game. Lumberjacks working on a double with big bad DJ Archer stepping up for Portland. He struck his first time up. Got a push. Crossed over and almost ended up tripping up the 6'10. He's left with the six behind. Mm. Bad time for that to happen. Now the hitman can strike out to shoot 246. Max score for Portland with a spare here is 234. That ball just never got far enough right. Kind of stuck a touch of the approach, but it had no effect on the coverage. And there's a fixture here in Portland. The chopper. Matt Sanders, the number five pick. Nobody was shocked when he was selected in the first round. I sure wasn't. This is a good player. And young. He'll be good for a long time. Yep. There you go. Good right there, kid. Good job. Sets up the 10th frame. Sanders, baby. Where you at, Crown? Where you at, Crown? No matter what Portland Lumberjacks do now, they cannot shut out Philly because of that strike right there by Matt Sanders. And Jason Couch, the manager, is turning up a little bit here with the home crowd. Here's Kyle. That was the six pin that beat the messenger to it. And Duffy's got a front row seat for that one next to the fighter here. Let's take a look and see what pin was responsible. Six pin leans on it. Actually caught it up top and knocked it off its axis just enough to get the 10 to topple. Smallwood. Collision among pins and the seven is left standing. Guess what? Portland and Big West Malak can step up now and steal this game. The West's first shot, his only frame of the fifth, he missed wide right. So we'll see what adjustment he has to make. So this will be for 225 here. Count very important here. If he gets nine or better, he forces West Milan to throw two. And Smallwood in no hurry.
Okay, there's your nine. You know, I, I thought I asked Tom Doherty to never do that again, and then yeah. Smallwood steps up and leaves another yeah, solid eight, and my phone's ringing. It's because we love you. All right, Randy, Wes's first shot wasn't a good one. Was it just a bad shot, or did he have a bad read? Uh, I think it was just out of his hand really bad. And then he missed target, probably going right early. I think he knows how to play the, the right lane and what his ball's supposed to do. But he's got to have two strikes. Two strikes and one pin. That's one. Easy, Big West. You need one more. Almost ran. He's got a bad wheel, and he almost ran over yeah. there to tell him. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great move by Tim Mack to run over and, and grab his anchor puller. <laughs> that last shot all for naught if he doesn't strike on this ball. Big shot for the win. Got it going. It's a quiet 10 and a loss in game one. If he spares this, they lose by one pin. And remember, they had an open frame in the beginning, a split, and was not converted. And in fact, was missed completely. And that could be the difference. It is the difference, really. But nobody knew that back then. And he'll miss it. He's throwing a strike ball. Yeah. So the Hitmen take game one. They're going to force the Portland Lumberjacks to win the second game and the roll-off in order to make it to the semifinals. Tantalizingly close for the big nasty, but not to be. Join us for our next PBA telecast Sunday, May 6th at 1 o'clock Eastern for the Queen Good Fall with PBA League semifinals. We already know it's going to be Motown versus Silver Lake. Join us next Sunday at 1. We also know Dallas is through to one semi, but at the moment, Philadelphia has the edge on Portland. Well, it's time for our Go Bowling Fan Tip of the Week. We're going to head to the great state of Texas, Fort Worth, and here's Diane's question for Randy. Hi, Randy. My name is Diane Dudley, and I bowl league at Cowtown Bowling Palace in Fort Worth, Texas. If I leave the double wood, can you please show me on how to pick up the sleeper? <laughs> well, that's that that's wrong on every level, Dave. Oh, Just they so, made a T-shirt out. Yeah, of no, that's terrible. Uh, so, Diane, the key to picking up any time any, any time you're leaving double wood, whether it's the three nine or the two eight, it's all about hooking the ball into that spare so you can cover that back pin. Uh, if you were using a spare ball in that video, you want to go to something that's stronger. Try to keep your hand behind the ball a little bit longer and roll it so you can get some down lane reaction. It's the best way to make any type of double wood leave. And that is our Go Bowling Fan Tip of the Week. All right, we've seen match number one go by. Philadelphia with a victory over Portland. Your thoughts on match two? What do you think? What are you looking for? Heart heartbreak loss for Portland. How do they rebound? That's what I'm looking for. All right, we'll see how this happens because a loss for Portland and they're out. But if they win, we'll have a roll off. And we've already had one. One today. This Portland crowd helped their side here in the Ocean View and Falmouth PGA League. The final quarterfinal and the final game of the quarterfinals about to happen with Philadelphia in front one nothing. Jason Couch, the glow of victory at the moment. And Tim Mack, the face of concern. Right on cue, guys. Thanks for helping. No changes in our lineup, so Ryan Simonelli starts now. They switch lanes, so Portland's on the left. And the 3-6 lead for Ryan. You know, we haven't seen left-handers 
in the quarterfinals dominate very much. Jesper Svensson with the two-handed approach did well, but the one-handers have had a little bit of a tough time here. Matt Sanders did okay with your thing. It's hard for Simonelli to open the lane up because he throws it so hard. But there's so much friction that when he moves left and tries to go straighter, his ball over hooks. Ronnie Russell. Absolutely dead solid, perfect. Another beautiful shot by Ronnie Russell. All I did is just give it a little more. Jojo Yonifan has performed perfectly thus far. Yeah, all the newcomers have done. They've done great, well, right? to Brooklyn and it will leave one behind. And there's a tricky left lane. It hooks more from the middle part of the lane. And that's why I really like what Chris Barnes did and what Matt O'Grady did when they moved right and tried to play right of second arrow. Jojo, the father of twins, Neen and Nina. Handle of ease that time. The hitman will turn to Chris Lowshutter. His eyes got real big for a moment there, and he broke up disaster. Speaking of real big, that was a really big break, tripping the big four out. Up the lane a little, a little too much. Four, six, seven standing. Six, seven go late. So no mistakes in the early going for the first two bowlers again. The number two bowlers will now rest until the seventh screen. And here's DJ Archer who's been lofting to the beat. See what happens on the hooking lane for DJ. Oh, I love this chant. They're yelling danger zone from the cartoon archer. Outstanding effort by the crowd here. Well, he's about as deep as he can get, and that ball never got far enough to the right for DJ. A lot of times when players get that deep, if you can't drift left, the bar return is in the way. Again, looks like he was uncomfortable with the approach on the spare. He may have to go as far as free court to have a chance to get as open as he wants to go. We see a little bit of that from DJ from time to time, that little hop there at the foul line. Reminiscent of Sean Maldonado, his good friend. Here's the dominator. And that's how you earn a nickname like that. He's in hooking it. I didn't move. Told his teammates he didn't move. That was beautiful. Nope, still close here in the very early going. Kyle Troop. Last, I'd say, calendar year has really emerged as a star on this tour. Trouble here, though, in a 4-9. Big trouble in Portland. Tough break leaving both the four and the nine. Kyle Troop's going to try to slide the four into the nine pin and avoid an open. Going to miss it, I think. The 
drive. I think in that situation, you definitely go for it. Second time we've had an eight open for the Lumberjacks. Now Matt Sanders very quietly going about his business and doing well. Ooh, 710 was there for a blink of an eye. He's got an easy one left. Avoid open frames at this point. Soft seven, cover the spare, move on. Three teams through already in the semifinals on May 6th. Uh-oh. Aim it right back. Yep. Right back. Down, Down to a 6-10 right. lead. We will miss you things in TV. It's okay. We won't have that. Didn't expect this. Now the Lumberjacks down by just six. And the chop champ comes back out for West Milan. Do your go bowling tip of the week there. I promise you, he's not throwing it straight at this 2 8 lead. This ball will be curving into the 2 8. Diane, you should be watching. This is our hammer tough spare replay. Well, you saw the fan tip, Diane. This is why you want to curve it. It, it gives you a bigger margin for error. Now Tom Smallwood. And yeah, down you go, 10 pin. So the hitman will get a clutch strike from Tom Smallwood in the fifth. Ronnie Russell's bowled really well for Philly. The hitmen have the one nil lead and a little bit of a lead in game number two. So this crowd trying to rally their lumberjacks as we tell you about the PBA network. It's your one-stop resource for all the ways the PBA communicates with its fans. The PBA Network includes live event streaming on Extra Frame, PBA social media outlets like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, a mobile gaming app, and of course, our official website, PBA.com. Right now, the PBA Network is counting down the top 60 moments in PBA history. For more information, go to PBA.com, click on the PBA Network link. Ryan Simonelli looking for a good look here. Gets it there. Go. Make it happen. Fortunate. But they are back in it. They need to start striking now to do the Lumberjacks. This guy here has been perfect. Oh, big hard left turn. Celebration for uh, Joe Jones. Yeah, Ronnie Russell perfect today for his team. And I'll tell you what, this guy hasn't been far behind. We saw the max scores. The hit men can go as high as 248, 232 for the Lumberjacks max. I think this is a must must strike territory for Portland. That's trouble. Yeah. The wobbly 3 6 10 left behind. Again, this shot looks like Yanni is afraid to get the ball to the right. 
Well, DJ Archer's had that problem also. Yeah. It's like the players' minds lock up their swing to where if I get it too far right, it's going to hang. So it's an instant close down. Thumb goes around early. Ball never goes to the right. Help. Oh, my. Portland's Day and event maybe ending early. And you call this was a must strike, and it ends up being an open frame. And Chris Losgetter should send this group home very unhappy. Cut him in half. Portland, Maine's gotten very quiet. This went from a deficit of five to a deficit of 38, or a lead of 38, depending on who, who you're rooting for here. Big loft this time. And a flush strike for DJ. Well, there's still time, but they need help. They need an open frame, basically, right? Max of 200 yeah. for the Lumberjacks. The hitman riding three in a row. And Don Barrett struck in this game already. It's going to all but close the door on him right here with a, another strike. Looks good. Lumberjacks may have just been chopped down. Mark Roth threw a few like that in his day. How deep Don Barrett is and how sideways he can project the ball. Oh, Kyle Troop is ripped off with a ringing 10. And we've seen that on that lane where players make great shots. I think it was Sam Cooley that made, that yes. went back to back ring tens on that on that left lane, and this looks identical to that. And the only players that have really had a lot of success on the left lane seem to have played farther right. Portland's going to be eliminated. Yeah, that is the name of that tune right there. So the Hitmen are moving on. They will take on the Dallas Strikers, the two-time defending champion Dallas Strikers of Norm Duke on May 6th in our two semifinal show. And Matt Sanders slams the door shut. The Hitmen have advanced with a 2-0 win, and they're taking on the Dallas Strikers next week. All smiles in Philly. The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. My Spectrum. Spectrum delivers the most advanced TV, internet, and voice services. Think forward. By the United States Bowling Congress, creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit bowl.com for more. And by Barbasol Razors. Here's a no-brainer. Barbasol is making razors. Try the Barbasol Ultra 6 Plus today. So our semifinals are set here for the PBA League. It'll be the Muscle and the Atom Splitters, followed by an NFC East battle with Dallas Strikers and the Philadelphia Hitmen. And that leads us to our Geico Championship recap and my partner. Dallas Strikers in game one all over the Kingpins. They start with a front six, end with a double, led by the Wee Iceman, Norm Duke. They win game one, 241-224. Game two, however, would go to the Kingpins, and this would force a roll off. Marshall Kent gets up first on the left lane. He leaves a ring in 10. It's up to Norm Duke once again. Would he deliver? You betcha. Dallas moves on. Then it was the Hitmen and Lumberjacks. Game one, Matt Sanders using Urethane for Mount, throws a nice strike there. 
Prebagger in a double, forces Malak to double. He gets the first hit, leaves a 10 pin. The Hitmen take game one, then game two. Ronnie Russell was perfect for his team. And it was all about the five bagger they threw late. As the Philadelphia Hitmen would run away with game two, they advanced 209, 157. And Ronnie Russell is standing by with Kimberly. So, Ronnie, you know what? You were perfect today. You really stepped up for your team. So why is it you think that you did so well on that left lane when everybody else seemed to struggle? I think it's uh, more ball roll uh, generated. I just, I'm able to float it through the front and get the ball to tumble a lot better than down lane than a lot of players. Um, and plus, I love this environment. I mean, who couldn't love this environment, you know? Uh, some, some of our players get nervous. I mean, I hear on tour in this, but I love every bit of it, and I want more of it. All right. Well, you're going to get more of it. Good luck. Your team now makes it to the semifinals. Thank you. And that semifinals will feature the Muscle versus the Adam Splitters, the Strikers, and the Hitman Sunday, Sunday, Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. The fans show up in force. They get a little reward for being here. They also get T-shirts and great bowling and Hall of Famers like Pete Weber and Norm Duke. Norm Duke does it again, leading his team to victory as they keep their three-peat hopes alive. For that man there, Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, I'm Dave Lamont. For our ESPN crew, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the semis.